Three sisters. Once upon a time, very long ago, there were three sisters who lived together in a field. These sisters were quite different from one another in their size and also in their way of dressing. One of the three was a little sister, so young that she could only crawl at first, and she dressed in green. The second of the three wore a frock of bright yellow, and she had a way of running off by herself when the sun shone and the soft wind blew in her face. The third was the eldest sister, standing always very straight and tall above the other sisters and trying to guard them. She wore pale green shawl and she had long yellow hair that tossed about her head in the breezes. There was only one way in which the three sisters were alike. They loved one another very dearly and they were never separated. They were sure that they would not be able to live apart. After a while, a stranger came to the field of the three sisters, a little boy. He was as straight as an arrow and as fearless as the eagle that circled the sky above his head. He knew the way of talking to the birds and the small brothers of the earth, the shrew, the chipmunk, and the young foxes. And the three sisters, the one who was just able to crawl, the one in the yellow frock, and the one with the flowing hair, were very much interested in the little boy. They watched him fit his arrow in his bow, saw him carve a bowl with a stone knife, and wondered where he went at night. Late, in the summer of the first coming of the boy to their field, one of the three sisters disappeared. This was the youngest sister in green, the sister who could only creep. She was scarcely able to stand alone in the field unless she had a stick to which she clung. Her sisters mourned for her until the fall, but she did not return. Once more, the boy came to the field of the three sisters. He came to gather reeds at the edge of a stream nearby to make arrow shafts. The two sisters who were left watched him and gazed with wonder at the prints of his moccasins in the earth that marked his trail. That night, the second of the sisters left, the one who dressed in yellow and who always wanted to run away. She left no mark of her going but it may have been that she set her feet in the moccasin's track of the little boy. Now, there was but one of the sisters left. Tall and straight, she stood in the field, not once bowing her head with sorrow, but it seemed to her that she could not live there alone. The days grew shorter and the nights were colder. Her green shawl faded and grew thin and old. Her hair, once long and golden, was tangled by the wind. Day and night she sighed for her sister's return to her, but they did not hear her. Her voice, when she tried to call them, was low and plaintive like the wind. But one day, when it was the season of the harvest, the little boy heard the cry of the third sister who had been left to mourn there in the field. He felt sorry for her, and he took her in his arms and carried her to the lodge of his father and mother. Oh, what a surprise awaited her there. Her two lost sisters were there in the lodge of the little boy, safe and very glad to see her. They had been curious about the boy, and they had gone home with him to see how and where he lived. They had liked his warm cave so well that they had decided now that winter was coming on to stay with him. They were doing all they could to be useful. The little sister in green, now quite grown up, was helping to keep the dinner pot full. The sister in yellow sat on the shelf drying herself, for she planned to fill the dinner pot later. The third sister joined them, ready to grind meal for the boy. And the three were never separated again. Little sister green bean, orange pumpkin, and elder sister flowing green shawl, corn, together The three sisters were never separated again, until the day of the flood welling the land. It took two nights of rain for the roads to turn into rivers, fields to turn to lakes. At first, the roof held the water out, but the raindrops were like the nails being hammered, striking every tile loose. Then the door began to leak from the water being pooled with nowhere to go, turning the floor of the home into a pond surrounded by walls. Lastly, 
It was the windows that became the mouth for water to swim in. Hearing the whoosh of waves lapping the walls outside, it was the darkness of clouds looming, covering the window view. Little Sister Greenbean was the first to disperse her seeds into the water surrounding the sisters. Pumpkin hollowed herself and became a bowl as her seeds flowed into the water stream, sucked out of the window. Elder Sister Corn plaited her green silk shawl as a reminding reminiscence of growth. The three sisters shared their tears as they were soaked. The glaring sun of those days of warmth were hidden in the seeds, swimming now, drifting to other shores. Middle sister Pumpkin gathered her hollowed self, filling seeds of beans and corns. She thought, as the middle sister, I will bridge and bring us all to another piece of land. We can once again grow together, shading, shielding and nurturing the soil as we grow. The door opened, letting in a person, the little boy. Little boy, why have you returned to this empty home of only seeds, said Elder Sister Corn. I forgot that I have separated you once before, but I won't forget this time to bring you all with me, said the boy. Elder Sister Corn replied, here, take Pumpkin's collection of all of us in her empty pumpkin bowl, we are separated, but will grow into another land far from here. Another land? That's impossible, said the boy. Bring us to another place, like you did before, said Elder Sister Corn. The boy's eyes widened with urgency. Can't you see? We are on an island. There is no other land to see. Drown us in a bed of grass soaked water. See us grow. Lifting his gaze to Elder Sister Corn, Corn. The boy replied, I promise that I won't let you stop growing the next time the sun fights the clouds to shine again. <laughs>